going back to BP and whether uh, value investors out there should buy, we do want to bring in a value investor who did buy. Uh, just yesterday on the halftime report, value investor Whitney Tilson told us that he was getting long. This was his newest net long position in its portfolio. So what is he doing now? Whitney joins us on the fast line with a trade update. Whitney, did you add to your position today? We sure did. Um, we were sort of worried that in talking about it yesterday and saying we thought it was cheap, uh, you know, we, we, we always hope things we buy get cheaper. And uh, the panic and rumors and speculation, all just so ill-founded in our opinion, gave us a chance to uh, add materially to our position today. It's, it's still not a mega position, but stock was down 15 percent. We took it from a 4 to closer to a 5 percent position. So, Whitney, I don't know if you heard Gary Kaminsky. I mean, his specific question was, you know, as a val how do you value the company? So how are you valuing the company to, to answer Gary's question? Well, I, I mean, it's uh, we can read an income statement. We can read a balance sheet. And this is one of the most profitable businesses on earth. And by the way, we're not defending the company or the CEO. They have a terrible safety record. They botched the cleanup, the PR. They, they're going to pay a lot of money for this. And thank goodness they're such a profitable business that they're going to be able to pay it. The idea that this business is somehow going to file for bankruptcy is the silliest thing I've ever heard, frankly. Um, if they do, it would be a strategic thing like Texaco did years ago, where shareholders would be protected. The, the thing everybody seems to be missing is, is the unbelievable profitability of this business and the fact that they've got a uh, this problem in the Gulf. Uh, and it's a horrible, serious problem. I'm not minimizing it. And they're, they're paying a lot of money to clean it up. But as an example, this happened about two months ago. They've paid over a billion dollars of cleanup costs. In those two months, this company has generated almost five billion dollars of pre-tax profit. They can afford to clean it up. They can afford to pay the fines. And this idea that they're going to get hit with hundred, multi-hundred billion dollar legal judgments uh, that's going to bankrupt them is absurd. Hey, Whitney, because of the fact that you find value here in this stock that everybody else is having such a difficult time determining how to get the value, would you use the options? I mean, when I look at something like this and I see that volatility explode, that seems like a great opportunity. I know you're looking long term, but you can get premiums that you are unheard of. Talk about a dividend yield. You can set up a dividend yield right now by selling some upside calls. Yeah, um, it's. I mean, to some extent, the stock has gotten so cheap that it's trading like an option. In other words, there is a chance, and this is why we're not making it a 10 or 15 percent position. I'd say there's a 10 percent chance that this thing could go to zero or very severe permanent impairment, even from here. Um, and so, but I, we think there's a better than even chance that you're, you're going to double your money if you're just a little patient here. This is not Lehman Brothers. This is not a 30x levered company. Uh, this is one of the great cash producing businesses in the entire world. This is Exxon when it had Val the Valdez crisis. The stock is up sixfold since then. This is Merck. Remember the panic around Vioxx? The stock went from 45 to 25 in a matter of days. Three years later, the stock was at 60. Um, this is a classic panic, rumor filled, uh, speculative uh, right. uh, market said that, panic, Whitney, and we're taking having, advantage. Whitney, having said that, where do you pull the ripcord real quick? Um, I, I don't think we buy this. I mean, look, if it goes all the way down to zero, we're not going to buy it all the way down um, for sure. But uh, we've been, you know, we're the only thing that really blows this up is is untold uh, legal judgments. But those things take years. By the time this thing, uh, some big judgment gets appealed and appealed and appealed to the Supreme Court, 10 years have gone by and this company has earned $300 billion of pre-tax profits between now and then. So we think even in that case, I mean, keep in mind, Exxon Valdez, there was a $5 billion judgment against them. Ten years later, by the time the Supreme Court got to it, they cut it down to $500 million. So we do not have, it may seem like it, but we do not have an insane legal system, and we actually have a fairly conservative Supreme Court. So I just reject this thesis that somehow they're going to be forced to file for bankruptcy the, the because legal, of some prospect the legal of big system, legal Whitney, bill. may seem sane, but uh, Congress may be unpredictable. That's a word that some would use. Some other people would use something a little bit stronger. But uh, aren't you con are you concerned in terms of what keeps you up at night about this position that the liability caps will be removed and, or, or, or lifted to the point where it could uh, impair BP? Well, that's something that will take many, many years to play out. Okay. I mean, even if Congress lifts the liabilities cap, that doesn't mean the courts are going to bless uh, unlimited liability. I mean, let's just imagine, you know, the biggest judgments in history let's say twenty billion dollars thirty billion dollars forty billion dollars this company that's one to two years of profit uh... that's what everybody just keeps missing this isn't some uh... crummy over levered financial company that if they lose market confidence they're forced to file for bankruptcy right. within a week okay whitney always a pleasure thanks a lot for giving us an update there